He likes that seat. Got to fix up this old boat trailer today. As you can see, it's very rusty on these parts that are not galvanized. These will collapse if I leave it any longer. So yeah, time to replace those. There's a section here as well, which I'll have to uh, have a look at. I think it'll be all right if I just grind that back. But I think that was four millimeter thick steel. But it wasn't galvanized, that's the problem. That's what the salt water does to, to ungalvanized steel. It just eats it up. Once we've got it back on the road, I'll take that boat out for a blast. Do a bit of fishing. stainless for this because you can see how the other one rusted out. Stainless will last a lot longer. Wow. The back end of the boat actually hangs out. That's quite a lot of weight hanging back here beyond the last keel roller, which I don't know, I don't like that idea. I, I like to have the keel roller near the back of the hull, um, especially with all that weight of the outboard hanging off there. This one here is bent quite badly. That's come down probably a good inch. So I'm thinking I might just put a piece of this axle tube further back and have the keel roller on that and then I can just have this directly bolted to the rear frame it saves making up a silly thing out the side there I think that's probably just as easy to do and it's going to add a lot more strength to it as well being a full tube bent that is quite rusty as well so we'll get rid of that
Right, I've got rid of the rust in that frame and painted it with uh, rust killing primer. So now I can put the straps on here. I just have to bend a flat on each end. Right, that's pretty much the rear end finished. It's going to support the hull a lot better with the rollers further back. So I'll go through with the wire brush now and give everything a good tidy up. Brush off all this crusty stuff on the galvanising. That doesn't look too bad at all underneath, just the odd little patch of rust, but nothing major. The only thing I will have to do is replace this bearer here, because if you look along the top of it, you can see it's quite bent. Which I did notice, looking across the top of the rollers, there is a bit of a dip here. And the bottom of the hull is actually perfectly straight, so I think we'll replace this one. I could push that down and bend it back, but it's just going to weaken it even further, so we might as well replace that, I think. That's the new support welded on. Straightened everything out now so it's going to support the hull more evenly. Well that's pretty much all the welding done so I'll just go around with the wire brush now. Get rid of all that corrosion and dirt and then we'll give it a paint job. Right, that's the first coat of paint dry. Got a bit of rain last night, so it was good to seal it up before it rained. We'll strip this axle down, get all the rust off, and give it a paint job, and then it's ready to go back together. Right, I've drilled a few test holes in the worst of the uh, rusty section and I can see that salt water hasn't been getting inside. There's no rust in there so it's been all sealed up. It has lost a bit of strength there. It probably would be alright to, to just get rid of the rust, paint it and um, seal up these holes. But I think while I've got it apart I might as well make a new axle for it using galvanised steel which is thicker wall as well, that's 5mm versus I think that was 4mm and it's probably lost another 
almost a millimeter in places so it, it definitely has weakened it uh, like it probably would be right but yeah the last thing i want to do is be stranded with a broken axle in the middle of nowhere when i turn it you can see that hub moving so i think it was never welded on straight in the first place uh, yeah might as well just build another one and make it straight <laughs> while i'm waiting for the parts to arrive i'll work on these get a little rust off the springs and everything and give those a paint I've got new hub stubs and decided to get some new rims as well because they came as a package deal and these old ones are quite rusty but the flange is further in on the new rims uh, it's kind of near the middle whereas this one's near the outside so uh, the new axle is going to be slightly shorter um, to account for that if I did it the same length the wheels are going to be sticking outside the mudguard so I've got to measure between the two holes figure out where the where to cut the new axle it'll be probably a little bit shorter than the original so I'll just figure all that out get cutting and welding put the stub axle into the axle tube um, about 20 millimeters from the seal lip so it's going to be that deep in the edge of the tire is going to be just inside um, the edge of the mud guard and that leaves us plenty of room on the inside for different rims somewhere there should be good we'll mark the locating hole I'll be drilling some weld puddle holes on the other sides but so I don't weld this one accidentally I'll just put a little cross next to it and then I know to leave that one alone and not weld it now I'm going to make some weld plug holes um, around about three quarters the length of the stub axle in there the stub axle comes to there weld puddle holes can go around about 25 in three of those at each end and then I'll fill those up with weld now I've got to get the stub axle in the end of the axle tube as you can see it doesn't quite fit because there's a weld there that's protruding from the side so I've got to get rid of that somehow before I can get the uh, stub axle in I'll try and use the air hammer to peel that off it might work I've never done it like that normally I just get the file and file it down but this might be quicker so we'll see how that goes that worked pretty well that's a lot quicker than filing it I just had to finish off the last little bit with the file so you can see the stub is loose in there now so um, I've made some shims up just to bring it across to one side that'll hold it in there firmly until I can tack it and center it so I'll do the other side and then we can weld them in Just double checking everything, that looks good to me. 
the wheel that's going to be within the edge of the mudguard and there's plenty of room between the inside of the rim and the, the frame and the spring so I can weld those stubs in place now straight edge along there as long as it's sitting flat on that face and then measure down you can get it very very accurate that way taking into account the thickness of the shim which is 0.5 of a millimeter as the shim is only on two sides if you had shims equal thickness shims on all sides then you don't have to worry about that it's time to weld the plugs now but first of all I'll drill through the shim uh, just to get a better weld in there here's a carbide burr That axle is ready to bolt onto the springs. The locating hole in the springs goes in the hole that I've drilled. That hole is the only real place where salt water can get inside the axle, which I don't want to happen because it could rust from the inside out. Because this trailer is going to be launching in salt water quite a bit of the time. So I'll put a little O-ring um, over the locating pin and that should stop any water getting in. So I'll be using these bearing buddies which have a grease nipple on them so you can pump grease through the bearings. They're excellent for boat trailers because they keep the salt water out.
Well, that's awesome. That's what we want. What a beautiful spot. Bites. Dinner, guys. Car wife for dinner. Yep. Yeah. High five. Good work, guys. Oh, it's a baby. Oh, no. oh, baby. There you go, fella. Oh, I'm pulling somewhere up on the 